look at some Jewish traditions about the Feast of Trumpets that's not specified in the Bible that can definitely make us think of rapture. And God is in control of all that. The Lord is sovereign. But uh, this is a direct quote from Chabad.org. On both days of Rosh Hashanah, that is the Feast of Trumpets, we read about the life of Isaac. On the first day, we read about God granting Sarah's wish and blessing her with a son, Isaac. On the second day, we read how Abraham almost sacrificed him on the altar. So Abraham offering his son is emphasized on the Feast of Trumpets. And of course, this points us to Jesus because he's the substitute. But the reason the Jews think of Isaac at the Feast of Trumpets because this uh, substitute, Ram, was held by his horns. And that's how he became the substitute. And those, remembering those horns, they blow the shofar. They blow, take that ram's horn and blow it on the Feast of Trumpets. So that is interesting. So the shofar reminder of Isaac and the sacrifice. One side of the ram's horn would represent the Pentecost, and the other side represent the Feast of Trumpets. That's according to some of their, their uh, sayings. And we see the Feast of Trumpets is on a new moon. First day of the month is a new moon. And, uh, you know, Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour. Our hope is at this time, as the Feast of Trumpets get near, that this is a clue that the Savior's given us, that it's going to be on the Feast of Trumpets that the trumpet blows and that Jesus comes to take us home. This is the exact wording from a Jewish website, Chabad.org. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. It is the anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve and a day of judgment and coronation of God as king. So there are a hundred trumpet blasts. The main thing is blowing the shofar. That's it. Nine sets of 11. Now that's not in the Bible. That's developed as tradition. But then one long last blast a hundred times. The last is being the longest is referred to as the last trump. And uh, October 2nd to 4th in 2024 will be the Feast of Trumpets. So the last trump, I guess, there would be blown on the October 4th. The Feast of Trumpets is called the Hidden Day, Yom HaKaseh. And thinking about that, we can surely relate that to rapture. Psalm 27, 5 and 6, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. So it is called the hidden day, Yom HaKasei. The Day of Feast of Trumpets is called the Hidden Day. And could it be that we will be hidden on the Feast of Trumpets? It's a day referred to as Yom HaZikaron, the Day of Remembrance. Remember us. That reminds us here of Malachi chapter 3. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Lord. Now that very well can be a reference to the day of rapture. On the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as a father has compassion and spares his son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. On the day when I act, you're going to see the difference. On the day when I act, those who feared my, the Lord, those who knew the Lord, they will be his treasured possession. He's going to spare them. He's going to spare them on the day that he acts. So the, so the Feast of Trumpets is called Yom HaZikaron, the Day of Remembrance. And God is going to remember us. He's going to remember us. Praise the Lord. And uh, we can continue that to say 
the Jews consider the blowing of the shofar on the Feast of Trumpets to be an awakening blast. And we can surely think about the rapture in relationship to an awakening blast because we know the dead in Christ will rise first and then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air in Isaiah 26, verse 19 to 20. And there is the word rapture encoded in this uh, passage here, but um, that's a different video, but it's, uh, this passage is a rapture passage. We can at least uh, consider that. But your dead body will live, Lord. Their, their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Sounds like a rapture passage to me. Go, my room. Go, my people. Enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself for a little while until his wrath is passed. Sounds like a rapture passage to me. The, the uh, Feast of Trumpets is a king's coronation. It is... The blowing of the shofar represents the trumpet blast that is sounded at a king's coronation. It's the ceremony of crowning a king. And when we have the rapture, what are we going to do? When we get to glory, we're going to crown him with many crowns. The lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee and hail him as the matchless king throughout eternity. Amen. It is called the day the heaven opens for a moment. Now I learned this <clears throat> from a Jewish atheist sitting in front of him on a train and I was talking to him about how Passover points to Jesus because he died on Passover. He's the lamb of Passover. And uh, then he started telling me about the tradition of Rosh Hashanah and how it related to Isaac and uh, the ram's horn. And I talked to him about how that also can relate to Jesus because he's the substitute just like Isaac was the substitute. But he told me that it was, he told me, remember his words, he said, oh, Jesus again. We had Jesus on Passover, now we're going to get Jesus on Rosh Hashanah again. But it's called the day, but he told me that as they blow the shofar, it's considered that it's the day the heaven opens for a moment. And I did verify this here. They consider it's a time that the gates of heaven swing open on Rosh Hashanah momentarily. That fits us, our rapture theme. Those gates going to swing open wide. And we're going to go to glory. Those who are saved. Hallelujah. Could it be on the Feast of Trumpets? We sure hope so. We don't know for sure. But if we think about the day that heaven opens for a moment, we're thinking about what the good Lord uh, said to John on the island of Patmos in Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked and behold a door was open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was that were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here and I will show you things which must be hereafter. So there was a door open in heaven. As the Feast of Trumpets, there's been, it's the day the heavens open for a moment. In Revelation 4, there was a door open in heaven and I heard of a trumpet and then said, come up here. And that's going to be a, what we're going to find on the rapture. The good Lord's going to say, come up here and we're going to go. We're going to go up in the clouds to meet him in the clouds, and he's going to take us to the place he's prepared for us. The blowing of the shofar is considered a call to repentance. It's the beginning of judgment. They call it Yom Hadin. And the beginning of judgment is going to come. We can consider this a rapture consideration, specifically that it's going to be a call to repentance to the Jewish people that uh, they got left behind and see all the Followers of Jesus get taken. It's going to call them to repentance. And it's going to be the beginning of judgment. Now that's just a, a, a theory that that would happen on the Feast of Trumpets, but they do consider it the blowing of the shofar to be a call to repentance. And if the Christians are taken, the followers of Jesus are taken, and the Jews that are left behind wake up and realize that that'll be the beginning of judgment. If they repent and believe, turn to Christ and believe, they'll be saved and forgiven. 
And then uh, Yom Kippur is considered the end of judgment. That may very well is considered the time Christ return again. So it's a day of the heavenly court. Now this is their tradition on Rosh Hashanah. As, they, as we read Rosh Hashanah prayers each year, this is the day all inhabitants of the world pass before God like a flock of sheep. So it's going to be a, um, a decision made concerning the destiny of all the people in the world. So all the inhabitants of the world pass before God like a flock of sheep. Then 10 days later, judgment is finalized, the day of atonement. So uh, judgment is finalized. Feast of Trumpets proclaims God is king on this day. God determines their fate for the year ahead. The greetings on the Feast of Trumpets is extremely interesting. May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. Or may you be inscribed and sealed in the book of life. That is their greeting on the Feast of Trumpets. May you be inscribed and sealed in the book of life. That is just amazing. Because if you're taken in the rapture, you, you can know you were, you're sealed in the book of life. But if you weren't taken in the rapture and you uh, r repent and turn to Christ and believe in him, which I believe at least 144,000 Jews are going to do that on the day of the rapture, they're going to be inscribed and sealed after, they, after the rapture. But they'll be left behind to be evangelists in this world. And this is straight from Jewish website. What are the four names of Rosh Hashanah? They call Yom Harat Olam. It's translated as the birthday of the world. Yom Hazikaron is translated as the day of remembering. And Yom Hadin is the day of judgment. And Yom Teruah is translated as the day of sounding the shofar. This is the actual name that the holiday is called in the Torah. The day of sounding. The day is approaching, dear brothers and sisters. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And the day is approaching. Hebrews 10.37 said, Yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And you can give that verse, Hebrews 10.37, uh, to those who are mocking and scoffing or saying, well, you've been watching, you've been saying this and saying that, and he's not here. We'll tell you, tell him this. Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Canadian prepper is showing us clearly. Russia appears ready to strike the U.S. with nuclear weapons. And Putin is telling us it's not a bluff. It's not a bluff. And he's been warning about this for a year already. The time is near, dear friends. The time is near. Israel's the hour hand, Jerusalem the minute hand, and the Temple Mount is the second hand. Jesus Christ is the King, and He's coming soon. They're getting ready to build a train from Ben Gurion Airport to the Temple Mount. Jesus Christ is the King, and He is coming soon. I hope you're ready. I hope you will prepare this day. Uh, you prepare by believing in Christ. That's a personal preparation. And Jesus did say, if you love me, keep my commandments. So, you know, the bride, getting ready for the bridegroom, getting ready for the wedding, she gets more and more focused on the details of the wedding. And, and uh, we get more and more focused on loving Jesus. As we know he's coming. As we know he's coming. That'll please him. Love hit, uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 37. Blessed are those servants in the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say to you, he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet and sit and serve them. Go forth and serve them. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Dear friends, Jesus Christ is coming. We got the Feast of Trumpets right around the corner right now. And I hope you're ready. And I hope this was a little blessing to you as we've looked at the, the Feast of Trumpets that is coming up. Because we're going to have a hundred trumpet blasts. And I don't know for sure that's the day. Yes, I do love Pentecost as a, as a, as a, as a consideration for a uh, rapture day in the Bible. There's a lot of interesting things about the uh, Feast of Trumpets. Uh, I mean the uh, uh, Pentecost, but uh, the Feast of Trumpets is also has a lot of interesting things. So uh, that's what's near. So that's what we're looking at. And I believe this is... Very, this very well could be the day.
could be the day and the time, the season. The Lord bless you all. Jesus is coming soon. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Face to face, we shall behold Him. Face to face, what shall it be? Face to face, I shall behold Him. Face to face, what will it be? Face to face, it's going to be a glorious day. The Lord bless you all. Check this website, he died for you.com.